ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله in the most truthful of speeches the book of Allah وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم and the best guidance is the guidance of our beloved messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها and the worst of affairs are those things when you invent into this religion of ours وكل محدثة بدعة and everything when you invent into this religion of ours is an innovation وكل بدعة ضلالة and every innovation is misguidance and it leads astray وكل ضلالة في النار every going astray every misguidance is in the hellfire ثم أما بعد my dear brothers and sisters in Islam even though now we are post one week from when the month of Ramadan ended, and we reminded ourselves to keep ourselves strong, we still see the masjid being devalued as what its importance should be in the heart of the Muslim, in the heart of the community, in the heart of the ummah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, إِنَّمَا يَعْمُرُ مَسَاجِدَ اللَّهِ مَنْ آمَنَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَأَقَامَ الصَّلَاةَ وَآتَ الزَّكَاةَ وَلَمْ يَخْشَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ فَعَسَى أُولَٰئِكَ أَن يَكُونُوا من المهتدين. Allah he says in Surah Al-Tawbah what means Allah, uh, the masajid of Allah, the mosques, the, the Islamic centers, the masajid of Allah shall be visited and maintained by such who believe in Allah and the last day and they establish the regular prayer and they pay their zakat and they fear another than Allah. They fear only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is they who are expected to be upon true guidance. The true guidance, the one who's really guided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not only just says they believe in Him, but they establish their prayers, they pay their zakat, they fear only Him, they are the ones who maintain the masajid, not by the donation boxes, not by cleaning it, but by praying their prayers in them. The masajid should be in our heart, above our homes, above our businesses. Shaykh Salih al-Fawzan, hafidhahullah, may Allah preserve him, he said, Jannah is a commodity, it's expensive. But you don't get Jannah bit tamanni, you don't get it by just saying, I want it, so it's going to come to me. You don't get Jannah because of al awlad or kathrat al amwal. You don't get Jannah because you have a lot of money or you have a lot of children. You don't get it because of your lineage. You get Jannah by doing what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded, obeying Him and His Messenger. Man amana wa amana amanam salihah, the one who believes and does righteous good deeds, these are the ones who Jannah is prepared for. So even though Allah, look at the, the benefits we're going to see today, even though He gives us more reward for coming to the masjid, as you're walking, you're in a state of getting blessings already. Sitting in the masjid waiting for the salah, you're in a state getting dua for you by the malaik of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by the angels of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the reward for praying in jama'ah. And Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma qal, qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, salatu rajul, salat al rajul fi al jama'a tazidu ala salatihi wahdahu 27 prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said that the prayer of a person in jama'a in the masjid and congregation is 27 times more rewarded 27 times more virtuous than the one who prays individually this yani it should be enough for us to come that allah commanded us to but in addition Allah, He increases the reward, yet we still find many of us 
resorting to laziness, resorting to false excuses, baloney excuses, excuses that have no validity with Allah, and praying in our homes or our workplaces. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Jum'ah did not make the Ummah by itself, nor did Ramadan by itself. What made the Ummah, what made it strong, what made them victorious was the togetherness, the, the closeness of the Ummah because of these daily prayers being done and performed in the Masajid. Many people, they live close to the Masjid. Alhamdulillah, now there's no camel or donkey you have to ride. You don't even have to take your feet. There's bikes, there's cars, there's whatever else for you to get here. Yet we still find people, many uh, being away from the Masjid, وَهَذَا آيَةَ مِنْ دُعْفِ الْإِيمَانِ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ And this is a sign of weakness of faith in a person's heart. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, some come to the masjid when they do, even in a state where they're lazy or bored, or as if it's a burden, or in a hurry. And even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He told Allah's Messenger sallallahu He said, when you come to the prayer, وَأْتُوهَا بِالسَّكِينَةِ Come to it calmly. You're supposed to come to it willingly. Don't come in a rush, even when you're coming to it. Come in a state of calmness. وَأَنْتُمْ تَمْشُونَ And come in a state of tranquility. مَا وَعَلَيْكُمْ السَّكِينَةَ فَمَا أَدْرَقْتُمْ فَصَلُّوا وَمَا فَاتُكُمْ فَأَتِمُّوا And the Prophet ﷺ, he concluded that hadith saying, Come to the prayer with tranquility and calmness. What you catch of the prayer, pray it. And what you missed, then you make it up when the salah is over with. عن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لا يزال العبد في صلاة ما كان في مصلاه ينتظر الصلاة وتقول الملائكة اللهم اغفر له اللهم ارحمه حتى ينصرف أو يحدث This hadith in Sahih Muslim Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم and look at the virtue of just being in the masjid waiting for the prayer or sitting in it after the prayer is done look at the virtue given to you Prophet Muhammad ﷺ, he said the servant is constantly in prayer as long as he's in his place of worship, waiting for the prayer to be observed in jama'ah. And the angels, they invoke blessings upon him, saying, Oh Allah, forgive him. Oh Allah, pardon him. Oh Allah, show mercy on him. And they continue, they continue to do so until he returns from the masjid, having completed his prayer, or until his wudu breaks. It was said in the hadith, it said, I said, how is the evolution broken? He said, by breaking wind noisily or with noise, meaning he has lost his wudu. You're consistently in that state of prayer, just by being in the masjid, observing your prayers in the masajid. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, our condition that we see in the ummah, it's pitiful. Our condition is one of patheticness, without a doubt. And it's a sad state that we're in. This all can be fixed when we come back to the deen of Allah. And coming back to the deen of Allah starts with coming to the masajid for the men of this ummah for their five daily prayers. People come to the masjid instead to create conflict, to create fitna, to create separation, confrontation, to impose their culture, to bring bid'ah or innovation. And none of this is needed. All we need is the, the, the kitab Allah wa sunnah Rasulullah. All we need is the book of Allah and the sunnah of His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In the masajid should be those who want to be believers. In the masajid should be those who take the Qur'an as their guide. In the masajid should be those who love the sunnah of Rasulullah wasallam. In the masajid should be those who follow the salaf of this ummah. The, the, the sahaba, the tabi'een, the tabi'een, the, tabi the righteous predecessors from the companions to those who follow them and those who follow them. Those who fear Allah, wanting to come to the masajid. To make dhikr of Allah, to remember Allah, to, to invoke Allah and make dua to Allah, making it their routine. So my brothers and sisters in Islam, and why is the command to the sisters? Because you have husbands who you may be responsible for, you have children who you are responsible for, you have fathers and brothers, and you need to encourage and help and aid in the masjid being a daily routine that everything else in life revolves around. And Abi Hurairah رضي الله عنه قال, قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم والذي نفسي بيده لقد هممت أن أن آمر بحطب فيحطب ثم آمر بصلاة فيؤذن لها ثم آمر رجلا فيؤم الناس ثم أخالف إلى رجال إلى رجال فأحرق عليهم بيوتهم والذي نفسي بيده لو يعلم أحدهم أحدهم 
أنه يجد عرقا سمينا أو مرنتين حسنتين لشهد العشاء رواه البخاري Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he said in this hadith which is authentic in the Sahih of Bukhari by him in his hand is my soul I was about to order the collecting of firewood a fuel something I could light a fire with and then order someone to pronounce the adhan for prayer and then order someone to lead the salah call the iqama and lead the salah and then I would have gone to the homes and burnt the homes of the men who did not present themselves for prayer the compulsory prayers in congregation by him in whose hand is my soul if any one of them had known that he would get a bone covered with good meat or two small pieces of meat present in between two ribs you know the good meat the one that has a little bit of you know chew to it that has got a little bit of fat to it so it's tasty it's good it's soft it's tender then he would have turned up for Isha prayer in some narrations even if he had to come crawling he would come to Isha prayer and this is the sad reality without a doubt we offer food you'll see more people but we can't continue to do that our knee has to be purely for the sake of Allah for the face of Allah to please our creator subhanahu wa ta'ala but this is if يعني, only by itself this hadith was a proof about the obligation, the command for the men to pray their five daily prayers in the masjid. If this is the only one we can use, it is sufficient for you to see that obligation. And Abi Musa radiallahu anhu qal, qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a'adhamu al-nas ajran min fi salati ab'aduhum ta ab'aduhum mamshan. Wal-ladhi yantadiru salah hatta yusalliha ma'al imam a'adhamu ajran min al-ladhi yusalli thumma yanam. Ruwah al-Bukhari. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said in the authentic hadith, the people who get tremendous reward for the prayer are those who are the furthest away from the masjid. The more you have to come, the further you have to travel, the more reward you will get. And then those who are next and farthest and so on. So similarly, the one who waits to pray with the imam has a greater reward than the one who prays, just wanting to pray and get it over with and then goes to bed. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, he said, أَتَى رَجُلًا إِلَى رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ رَجُلٌ أَعْمَى That a man came to the Prophet sallallahu he was blind, he could not see. So the blind man, he asked the Prophet, the Prophet sallallahu to pray in his home because he was blind. فَرَخَّصَ لَهُ So the Prophet sallallahu he gave him permission to do so. As the man was walking he's away, he said, هَلْ تَسْمَعَ النَّدَاءِ do you, هَلْ تَسْمَعَ النَّدَاءِ Do you hear the call to prayer? Do you hear the call to prayer? قَالَ نَعَمْ فَقَالَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمْ So he said to the man, do you hear the call to prayer? He said, yes, I do. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told him to respond to it, meaning to come to the prayer. And this is the one who was blind. And nowadays, I have a little sniffle. I can't go to the masjid. My head hurts a little bit. I can't go to the masjid. I'm tired because I was chasing the dunya. I can't go to the masjid. And these are the false excuses, the, the sorry excuses that all of us give to not come to this place and we see its virtue. In another narration, Ibn Ibn Maktoum, <coughs> he was a blind man again, who he said, Medina has a lot of poisonous state, snakes and insects and this stuff like this. Oh, Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, so can I pray in my home? He said, do you hear? Come fast to prayer. Come fast, rush to success, hurry to success. قَالَ نَعَمْ قَالَ فَأَجِبْ He said, yes, I hear that. So he said, so respond to it. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu, he said, وَلَوْ صَلَّيْتُمْ فِي بُيُوتِكُمْ كَمَا يُصَلَّ الْمَتَخَلَّفْ فِي بَيْتِهِ لَتَرَقْتُمْ سُنَّةَ نَبِيُّكُمْ وَلَوْ تَرَقْتُمْ سُنَّةَ نَبِيُّكُمْ لَضَلَّلْتُمْ Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu, he said, and if you were to abandon praying your prayers, your obligatory prayers, again, for the men of this ummah, and the men is not when your sons hit 18. The men of this ummah is when they hit that age of puberty. Some could be age 9. And then the record starts for them, regardless of what you think they are in your eyes as a child or this or that. He said, if you pray in your homes, if you were to pray in your homes, like some of those laggards do, some of those who stay away from the prayer, you would be abandoning the sunnah of your messenger sallallahu alayhi wa he added, if you were to abandon the sunnah of your messenger وسلم, you will have gone astray. Not praying your prayers in the masajid is an abandonment of the sunnah of the best of mankind, our Prophet Muhammad So be mindful of this. 
Ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma, he narrated, and this we find in the Musnad of Ibn Abi Shayba, an authentic narration, he said, if we didn't see a brother in Salat al-Isha, Salat al-Fajr, this one, you can't say you're at the doctor, you can't say you're, you're, you're uh, yani, working per se, except for some brothers who fall into these categories. If we didn't see this brother at Salat al-Fajr and Salat al-Isha, asatna bi we had a bad idea about him, a bad opinion of him, just by not seeing them in those prayers. They don't have the excuses maybe that some may have in the daylight hours, going here, going there, working in the lights of these matters. So we need to struggle and exert and put extreme effort to do what we were commanded. And Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu qal, لَقَدْ رَأَيْتُنَا وَمَا يَتَخَلَّفُ عَنِ الصَّلَاةِ إِلَّا مُنَافِقٌ قَدْ عَلِمَ نَفَاقُهُ أَوْ مَرِيدٌ إِنْ كَانَ الْمَرِيدُ لِيَمْشِي بَيْنَ رَجُمَيْنِ حَتَّى يَأْتِي حَتَّى يَأْتِي الصَّلَاةِ وقال إن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم علمنا سنن الهدى وإن من سنن الهدى الصلاة في المسجد الذي يؤذن فيه. This hadith which is in Sahih Muslim of the Allah bin Mas'ud, he said, I have seen a time when no one stayed away from the prayer except for a munafiq, the one who stays away from the prayer in the masjid. He labeled them as having at least a characteristic of nifaq, a characteristic of hypocrisy, whose hypocrisy was well known. Or it would be a sick man, but if a sick man could still get to the masjid, walking between two people, aiding him to get there, he would still do so, and he would come to the prayer. And further, he said, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu he taught us the path of right guidance, amongst which is the prayer in the masajid, in which the adhan is called. My brothers and sisters in Islam, the adhan is called, alhamdulillah, in this masjid, even when it was closed, the adhan was called outside the doors of this masjid for every salah. Every salah the adhan was called. Those excuses that people try to make, they're not valid. The excuses that are valid, they're well known in the sunnah. Severe, severe fear. Severe illness, or illness that could make others sick or can, it can be can contagious. Traveling, these are the things that we know from the, the valid excuses. If it's raining hard and the likes of these matters. But outside of that, this coming to the masjid, this is a path of light. This is a path of the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, the path of guidance. If the adhan is called in this masjid, it is obligatory for the men of this ummah, the men of this city, the men of this masjid to come and establish their prayers in it. Even if the sick man could come at the time of a companion, but two men had to carry him, he would come. Look at all the ease we have. Yet you will still find in the row, sometimes in some of the salawat, the elderly brothers who have to use a cane to get here, or who have to walk with a limp to get here, or who have hunched backs to get here, or who have other reasons that are probably way more valid and excuse than what we as the majority have. And this is the sad reality of what we see coming to the masajid. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, he mentioned, he said, and the Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Salatul Rajul fi jama'a tazidu ala salatihi fi baytihi wa salatihi fi suqihi khamsan wa ishreena daraja. Wa thalika bi anna ahadakum idha tawadda fa ahsan al wudu' wa ata al masjid la yuridu illa illa salat wa la ينهزه إلا الصلاة لم يخطو خطوة إلا إلا رفع له بها درجة وحط عنه بها خطيئة حتى يدخل المسجد فإذا دخل المسجد كان في صلاة ما كانت الصلاة هي تحبسه والملائكة يصلون على أحدكم ما دام في مجلسه الذي صلى فيه يقولون اللهم اغفر له اللهم ارحمه اللهم تب عليه ما لم يؤذيه يؤذي, يؤذي فيه أو يحدث فيه رواه أبو داود وهذا حديث صحيح Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم he said prayer said by a man in congregation in this narration it mentions is 25 degrees higher 25 times more excellent than the one who prays by himself in the house, in his house, or in the marketplace, or his work. This is because when anyone performs the wudu, and he does it properly, and he goes out to the masjid, having no intention but to go for prayer, not for business, not to exchange something, not to, you know, gain something for him or herself, and nothing moves him except the prayer, then every step he takes, a rank of his is elevated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one sin is removed from him, 
by every step he takes walking till he enters the masjid. And when he enters the masjid, he will be reckoned in prayer as long as he's detained by the prayer. As long as he's here, waiting for the imam to establish the prayer and waiting for that prayer to happen, he's in a state of salah, even if he's just sitting reflecting. The angels keep invo- invoking Allah's blessings on him. As long as he remains seated in that place of prayer, saying, Oh Allah, forgive him. Oh Allah, have mercy on him. Oh Allah, accept his tawbah. So long as he does not harm anyone, or as long as he does not break his wudu or his evolution. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, so many ayat and hadith pointing for us to make this the center of our lives, this masjid the center of our lives, to check on one another, to make the community strong, to strengthen our faith, to build up our iman. May Allah make us of those who follow this command, those who are the companions of the masajid and the dayuf, the, the guests, أبى الرحمن أقول قال هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم الله يغفر لكم ذنوبكم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونصلي ونسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وبعد My dear brothers and sisters in Islam We said this last week I mean, at some point, we have to be true to ourselves. We have to be real. How can we have multiple roles? How can you come during Ramadan? You prove to Allah, you were the fool. You were the fool. If you prove to Allah during Ramadan that you could do something, and then when Ramadan leaves, you stop doing it. You're the fool. Because you prove to Allah, the Creator, the one who will reward and the one who will punish, what you're capable of. And to do something in Ramadan and then not do it outside of it, is, is يعني, a heresy. It's something that we should all be ashamed of. And I remind myself first, we get so caught up in dunya, yet this masjid has to be the center that our lives revolve around. It's not too hard. Once you get in the habit too, Allah makes it easy for you. But now we're listening to shaitan, we're not listening to Allah, we're not listening to his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Amr ibn Maymun, رحمه الله he said أخبرنا أصحاب رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أن المساجد بيوت الله في الأرض وأنه لحق على الله أن يكرم من زاره فيها this narration we find in the collection of Ibn al-Mubarak he said the companions of the messenger of Allah or Amr ibn Maymun he said that the companions of the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم used to say the masajid are the homes of Allah on earth and it is a right from Allah that He will honor those who visit Him. You're a guest of Allah in this house of Allah. This is not mine or yours. This is a house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're a guest when you're in it. It's like you're visiting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Without, of course, there's no obvious way you'll see Him physically and the likes. But this is the level that the companions used to see the masjid. Al Qadi ibn Sama'a, he said, for 40 years, I never missed the first takbir. Forget coming to the prayer. He never missed the first takbir. He was always here before the salah began for the congregational prayer, except on one occasion. It was when his mother died. Allah forbid, yani, when one of our loved ones dies, we don't see the masjid because we think the aza in our home, the condolences we're accepting in our home, is more beneficial to you and your family and your loved ones and the deceased one than coming to the masjid and praying to them here in the masjid of Allah. In Sunan and Huda, from the, from the ways of guidance, from the Sunnah of guidance, for this Ummah was to pray in the Masajid. So he said, I missed a prayer when my mother died, on that one occasion. So I got up and I said, okay, I'm going to pray it 27 times. So he prayed the four rakahs of Isha 27 times to make up for it. He said, when I slept, it was said to me in my dream, in my dream indeed you have prayed, but what about the angels saying, Ameen? Because this is another proof that we have in the sunnah, that when you say ameen out loud, in the out loud prayers, with the imam, behind the imam, or you say it even when you're in the silent prayers, that you say ameen after the fatiha, and it coincides with the ameen of the angels, then Allah will forgive you your previous minor sins. So it said in his dream, what about the angels saying ameen for you, so you can get that reward? How can you get that reward? How are you going to get that made up? By you praying Isha 27 times, you've missed out on that. On the authority of Allah ibn Umar al-Khawarili, 
He said, may Allah have mercy on him, rahimahullah. I never used to miss prayer in congregation, but one time I had a guest. And many times we have guests, so we say I'm not coming to the masjid. Because I have to honor my guest. When this masjid has more right over us. And if your guest doesn't want to come, that's their problem. But he said, I never used to miss a prayer in congregation except the time I had a guest and I was preoccupied hosting him. So I missed Isha at the masjid. I left the prayer. I left to go when I remembered and it was done. And I got to the masjid, it was already closed and I missed the prayer there. So I said, let me pray 27 times so I can make up for it. He said, that night I yani, had a dream. And in the dream I was riding a horse. And I was pushing my horse to hurry up with the other horses that were rushing. So I said to them at one point, I looked to one of them, or he said, one of the other riders of the horses looked back at me and he said, don't try and tire your horse, you'll never catch up with us. He said, what do you mean, oh brother? This is in his dream. He said that we prayed in jama'ah one time, and you missed the jama'ah this one time, so you will not catch up with this. And so he had sadness and worry, because he missed that one prayer. Hatim al-Asam, Rahimahullah, he said, I missed a prayer in congregation one time. Only Abu Ishaq al-Bukhari, Rahimahullah, he came to give me condolences because I missed a prayer. He said, if my child was to pass away, I would have had 10,000 people coming to give me condolences. But only one person gave me condolences when I missed salah, a salah of prayer in the masjid. These are from the examples of our righteous predecessors for us to know the value of this prayer. Yet many of us still sit at home at Isha time. Now it's going to be 10 o'clock for the rest of May, all of June, probably all of July. Most of us are sitting, you have to pray. You can't go to bed and miss the Salah. You can't wake up before Fajr and pray it. Right? We have the opportunities to come and worship Allah with no work, no excuses. Yet many of us, three or four miles away, would rather sit on our couches or sit with a group of the friends and sit drinking coffee or watching things on our phones or tablets or TV or whatever it may be. قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ وَسَلَّمْ سَبْعَةٌ ظِلَّهُمَ اللَّهِ فِي ظِلِّهِ فِي يَوْمَ لَا فِي ظِلَّ إِلَّا ظِلُّهُ He said, seven who are in the shade of Allah on the day of resurrection where there's no shade but Allah's shade. One of those groups, رَجَلٌ قَلْبُهُمْ مَعَلَّقٌ فِي الْمَسَاجِدِ It is the man whose heart is attached to the masajid. Not saying, I love it or giving to it monthly. It's establishing the prayers in it. This is what is meant under these ahadith. And you can have a shade on a day where everyone's running from their loved ones, sweating out of fear, some to the level of their necks, on that yawm al qiyamah, on that day of resurrection. Yet you can be in the shade of Allah because you were one who loved the masajid, you established the prayers in the masajid. Even with Jum'ah, we see that people came during Ramadan and then they teeter off from it afterwards with ayad billah. قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من ترك ثلاثة جمع تهاونا بها تبع الله على قلبه. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said in authentic hadith, whoever misses three jumas in a in a row, considering it not important, Allah will seal his heart. So my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, we need to work. We need to encourage our loved ones to come to the masajid for the regular prayers, to come on Jum'ah, to make the masjid their focal point of their life of which everything else will revolve around, so that they are those who are companions of the masajid. Islam is not just Jum'ah, it's not just Ramadan, it's not just Muharram, it's not just Hajj. It is at all times all-inclusive. And we have Muslims missing their salah in the masajid, yet they live nearby, work nearby, missing Jum'ah, live and work close by. And the masajid are not in our hearts more than we love this dunya. And to say so would be a lie, flat out lie. And our proof, our proof is our actions that show that other things have been put above praying in the masajid. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Uthman ibn Affan, he narrated that the Prophet wasallam he said, مَنْ صَلَّ الْعِشَاءَ فِي جَمَاعَةً كَانَ قَقِيَامَ نِسْفَ لَيْلَةً وَمَنْ صَلَّ الْعِشَاءَ وَالْفَجْرِ فِي جَمَاعَةً كَانَ قَقِيَامَ لَيْلَةً this hadith that we have in the Muslim Imam Ahmed, an authentic narration, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, whoever prays Isha in congregation in the masjid, it'll be written for him or her like they prayed half the night. You come for 10 minutes, but Allah will write that you prayed for 3 or 4 hours. Look at what Allah is doing to get us to make it to Jannah. And we're not even deserving of it. And then if you come for Fajr in Jama'ah, you prayed Isha and Fajr in Jama'ah, 
then it will be written for you like you didn't even sleep. Like you stood the whole night in prayer. Look at the virtue. Subhanallah, Allah doing everything possible to give you reward to make your scales of good deeds heavy, heavier than your scales of sins and evil. And Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu an Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal, man ghada ila al-masjid wa raha a'adda allahu lahu nuzalahu min al-jannah kulla ma ghada aw raha. Rawahu al-Bukhari wa Muslim. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, whoever goes to the masjid in the morning and the evening, Allah will prepare for him a place in paradise for every morning and evening. Can you imagine if you did this in your lifetime in one year? 365 times two, yani, because you're going a place for you in Jannah for every Fajr and Isha you pray in the masjid. وعن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ما <coughs> he, he said a Muslim does not regularly attend the masjid to pray and remember Allah, but that Allah feels happy with him. Just as a family feels happy when someone who was absent returns back to him. We see the joy when we lose someone, or we, we haven't seen someone in years when they come back. That same joy Allah has with you when you establish your prayers regularly in the masajid. And Abi Musa radiallahu anhu qal, qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, idha marid al-abd, أو سافر كتب له مثل ما كان يعمل مقيما صحيحا رواه البخاري this hadith which is صحيح in Bukhari Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم he said if a servant travels or he falls ill the likes of what he used to do when he was settled and healthy will be recorded for him so a brother who used to come to the masajid he had gotten COVID and it was in the last 10 nights of Ramadan and it pained him it pained him dearly, deeply, that he could not come out during those last 10 days. So I reminded him with this hadith, and this hadith is true. This hadith is the reality. It is authentic that the one who is sick should not come and make others sick. If they're truly sick, we're not talking, we're talking something that's contagious, right? Or the one who is traveling. If you are someone who comes to the masjid regularly, and you can't because you're traveling, Allah still, wherever you're praying, He puts for you like you prayed in jama'ah. If you come to the masjid regularly to pray, but then you fall ill, and you've got to pray at home because you're ill, Allah will still write for you like you prayed in the masjid in jama'ah. This, this virtue only comes if you're someone who regularly comes when you're healthy, when you're a muqim, when you're a resident in the city you're in. I want to share this last narration with you as well. And I'll just read a portion of it in, in the Arabic, insha'Allah. It's from Abdullah. And Abd, uh, Masood ibn Abd, uh, Abd, um, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, insha'Allah. And Abdullah, radiallahu anhu, anahu kana yaqulu, man sarraha an yalqa Allah azza wa jal ghadan musliman, fal yuhafir ala haula as-sarawat al-khams, haythu yunadi bihinna, fa inna Allah azza wa jal shara'a li nabihi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sunan al-huda, wa inna hunna min sunan al-huda. This hadith which is authentic in Nasa'i, Prophet Muhammad, or Abdullah, he said, radiallahu anhu, whoever would like to meet Allah tomorrow as a Muslim, let him attend the prayers in the masjid regularly, the five daily prayers, from where the adhan is called. The adhan is called here for all of the prayers. So according to this narration, and it has a level of being raised because it's coming from him, and he wouldn't say something on the, from the Prophet ﷺ if he did not have a backing for it. Whoever wants to meet Allah as a Muslim, and this should be the goal in our life. It's not to leave it wealthy, it's not to leave it with a, a big family, it's not to leave it with a, many loved ones, it's not to leave it with a, yani, a reputation that's good or whatever people seek. That's not the goal in this life. It shouldn't be. The goal in this life is that we meet Allah as a Muslim. The cancer, the illness, the hardships, the poverty, take it all. It's a ni'mah, it's a blessing from Allah, we just don't understand His wisdom. We don't understand the hikmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if you had all of that to deal with, your goal should be to meet Allah with a Muslim, as a Muslim. Whoever would like to meet Allah tomorrow as a Muslim, let him attend the five daily prayers in the masjid regularly from where the adhan is called. For Allah prescribed for His Prophet wasallam the way of guidance. And they, the prayers, are part of those ways of guidance. He said, I do not think that there's any one of you who does not have a place where he prays in his house. But if you were to pray in your houses and forsake the masajid, you would be leaving off the sunnah of your Prophet ﷺ. And if you forsake the sunnah of your Prophet ﷺ, you would go astray. You're not going to be on the guided path. 
There is no Muslim who performs the wudu and does it well, walks to the prayer, but Allah records a hasana for him, for each step he takes. Raises him one level and erases a sin for each step he takes. I remember how we used to take short steps. This was Abdullah saying this. I remember we used to take short steps even, so that we could get more reward for it. And I remember a time when no one stayed behind from the prayer except for a hypocrite whose hypocrisy was well known. And I had seen a man coming supported by two others until he would be made to stand in the row. And this hadith completely is in uh, the sahih of Sunan al-Nisa'i. Look at what's being asked of us. We're healthy for the most part. We're able for the most part. Allah has blessed us favors we can never enumerate. We can never count all the favors Allah has blessed us with and given us. We have something from the sun, Sunan al-Huda, from the Sunnah, the ways of the Prophet of guidance to establish the prayer in this masjid and any masjid you're in and you will get rewarded beyond belief raised d- degrees in Jannah sins being removed good deeds being written for you who is not in need of this? who is not in need of being the youth of Rahman from the guests of Rahman when you come to the homes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the masajid are the houses of Allah on the earth who is not in need of being in that special virtue? Who is not in need of the malaika saying, Allahumma khallahu, Allahumma rahamhu, Allahumma tub alayhi? Who is not in need of the angels making dua? Oh Allah, forgive him. Oh Allah, have mercy him. Oh Allah, accept his tawbah. You only get this in this place. Any of the masajid, not just this one. In the masajid of Allah, this is where you get it. If you want Jannah, if you want to meet Allah as a Muslim, if you want to be raised in degrees, be forgiven, get Allah's mercy, having the angels make dua for you, then start making this where you at least start with one prayer. Salat al Isha, 10 p.m. for the next two months and a half. Most of us aren't working no night shifts like that. Fajr, even earlier, before many of us have to go to work. Just start doing it. Start doing it. If we can start this here, if we can call one brother, two brothers, bring our sons, if we can do this, we can strengthen the community, then we can work on strengthening the ummah, then Allah will get us out of these conditions we're in. الله مخل المسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات يا إنهم الأموات إنك أنت سميع قلب المجيد يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك سبحان ربك رب العزة يا من يصفون وسلاما على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين